This is News 25 with Deanna O'Donnell. News 25, local news you can count on. Today's news is brought to you in part by Dr. George Leakes, a rumps optometrist since 1990, offering full spectrum eye care for children and adults. Call today, 727-8300. News is also brought to you by J.K. Nelson Law. Call 727-9900 today for your free consultation. If you need a lawyer, you need Nelson. This segment of the news is brought to you by Silver State Health, bringing quality medical and psychiatric care to Pahrump. Call 775-505-1214 for an appointment. Welcome to News 25. I'm Deanna O'Donnell. Well, authorities are investigating a deadly accident on U.S. Highway 95 in Nye County. Front Valley Fire and Rescue Chief Scott Lewis says firefighters and paramedics responded to the scene, but there was nothing that they could do to save the victim. Later Saturday afternoon, we were dispatched for a report of a pedestrian motor vehicle accident of a person versus a semi-truck on Highway 95 in the area of mile marker 17. Crews responded and found the accident as described. Initially, it was undetermined where the actual pedestrian had landed. A, a quick uh, search was commenced and it was found that the individual did not survive the injuries and was located underneath the semi. Uh, it was under investigation by NHP and Nye County Sheriff's Office. Uh, we quickly uh, conducted our scene size up risk assessment, determined that it was not a survivable event, and then cleared. And a two-vehicle crash Monday morning in Prump ends with an SUV on its top and its driver in the hospital. Prump Valley Farm Rescue Chief Scott Lewis tells us what happened. This morning, we're dispatched for a report of a single vehicle accident with a vehicle resting on its roof. Our crew arrived within about one to two minutes. They found that there was, through their scene size up risk assessment, that there was one person mechanically entrapped in the overturned vehicle. We updated or upgraded to a rescue assignment, bringing additional resources. Crews then kind of stabilized the vehicle, did a driver's side door removal, got the patient out, and he was transported to the local hospital. It ended up actually being a two vehicle accident that caused the rollover. Chief Lewis says that the driver of the other vehicle involved in the crash was medically assessed at the scene but declined to be transported to the hospital. While a 10-year-old boy is recovering from serious injuries, he sustained as a result of a weekend crash on Wheeler Pass. Saturday afternoon, we were dispatched for a report of an off-road accident in which a, a child has sustained a serious extremity injury. Crews arrived to find uh, the accident as described. It involved an off-road vehicle that was designed to operate off-road. We added Mercier to the assignment due to the extent of injuries. We established an LZ on Highway 160 at the base of Wheeler Pass. Patient care was transferred and that patient was subsequently flown to trauma. And so did he lose his arm? I don't know for certain, but I had heard that that may have been the case, yes. More news right after this break. You're watching News 25, the most recognized and farthest reaching local news in Nye County. News 25, local news you can count on. Optum Care Network of Nevada, offering Medicare Advantage members more than 3,000 primary and specialty care providers throughout the state. This segment of the news is brought to you by Pahrump Veterans of Foreign Wars Post 10,054. Open to our veterans and our community. Stop by or give them a call. Welcome back. Well, smoldering remnants of a weekend fire in Pahrump ignited again this morning. A field fire, which started Saturday evening, burned about five acres and damaged nearby greenhouses at the hemp farm located on the corner of Black Road and Irene Street. Front Valley Fire and Rescue Chief Scott Lewis says it appears to have ignited accidentally. Saturday evening, we were dispatched for a report of a brush fire in the area of Irene and Blagg. Engine 3 responded in short fashion, arrived to find a ground cover fire, wind swept. So they initially requested additional resources. The additional resources arrived, including myself, to find a approximately five acre property with a overabundance of organic waste material stored upon the surface, uh, about a foot and a half deep. And so I had pockets of fire and active fire throughout the property. There were two immediate greenhouses, exposures and travel trailers. The smoke production was extraordinary. You could see the smoke almost go horizontal with the winds across the valley from the north end all the way down to the south. And quite frankly, there was almost zero visibility in certain areas of the property. Crews did a great job 
controlled the fire with minimal damage to the exposure structures. It did not go beyond the property of origin. However, there were numerous spot fires that were managed throughout the night and through the next day. There was no active hemp on the property. Uh, so this was material brought in from elsewhere to use as a fertilizer at some point. It was going to be disked into the soil and it hadn't been done yet. How did it catch fire? Spontaneous breakdown is what we're looking at since it was organic material and it was material brought from an off-site location which had animals on it. We've worked with the, the uh, landowner and those that are also using the property for the, the crop production and uh, we had a game plan in place. That game plan was implemented yesterday and again the winds kicked up today, resurfaced a lot of that material we just discussed and so we were back out there with them you know, working the soil getting it to the point where the, the organic material was mixed in with the soil to the point where it wasn't as much of an issue for us. And here's today's Business First Brief. Here's Angela Miles with today's Business First Brief. Tapping our news, Walgreens expects by this time next week, workers will be able to start giving COVID-19 vaccines to residents and staff members in nursing homes. According to CNBC, Walgreens and CVS have deals with the government to vaccinate residents at long-term care facilities. Retailers, including Kohl's, are warning Christmas shoppers to get their online orders placed soon. Otherwise, there could be fees involved to expedite packages. Checking the economy, U.S. producer prices barely budged in November, edging up just one-tenth of a percent. It's a sign that inflation is low. Also, the University of Michigan Consumer Sentiment Index increased to 81.4 compared to the previous read of 76.9 as Americans are feeling more optimistic. To find out where you can see us every day, go to businessfirstam.com. Thanks so much, Angela. Well, Nye County Comptroller Samana Rucker reported at the December 1st Board of County Commissioners meeting. Rucker gave direction regarding the current and future financial condition of Nye County as related to the COVID-19 outbreak. The news was positive. And I did want to let the board know uh, tax came in for September. It was remitted um, in the end of November. We did get notice of it recently. We received 113% of budget, which is $189,000 more than we anticipated in the Nye County General Fund for September sales. Uh, so in total for the entire um, fiscal year, for actuals that we've received and for projected future months of revenue for CTAX, we're projecting a surplus of uh, CTAX of $350,000. So, um, CTAX is coming in better than we anticipated, which is good news. Um, our sales are uh, better than expected. What that means for the Knight County General Fund is pairing consolidated tax with the property tax revenues that have also been coming in strong. Um, we have a surplus of revenues in the Knight County General Fund of about $1.4 million, um, which, which is great. Conservative budgeting um, was something that we took very seriously when we generated the budget uh, earlier this calendar year in anticipation that COVID may impact property tax values and uh, sales, but we haven't seen that yet. And all the departments at this point in time are um, doing really well with the budgets that they've been given, with the exception of the employee concessions that were budgeted. And so our expenditure budget um, compared to our actuals and projections throughout the remainder of the year is also uh, positive. We, we have a surplus there as well. We look to come in about $2 million under budget for expenditures. Um, that, does, that does put Nye County in a good fiscal position. And it is my intention on the December 15th meeting to bring forward an item uh, before the BOCC for an augment to the Nye County General Fund to remedy the employee concessions because at this point in time, I'm not seeing the um, slowdown that we had initially anticipated. Um, so all good news. Uh, things are looking great. Um, departments are doing a great job. Um, and, you know, people are still out spending money, which is a good thing. Yep. More news after this break. You're watching News 25, brought to you by Mountain West Lawyer, Injury Attorneys, 727-9500. News 25, local news you can count on. 
News is brought to you by Canyon Ridge Periodontics. Give them a call at 702-966-0302. Well, Pahrump Valley Fire and Rescue crews and Knight County Sheriff's Office deputies are on scene to a fully engulfed structure fire this evening on Blossom Ranch Road. They have done primary and secondary searches of the home to see if any residents were inside and have not been able to locate anyone inside this structure. They are still working the fire at this time. We'll have more details on tomorrow night's newscast. Well, Sue Bai from the Prompt Valley Lions Club stopped by the KPVM TV studios to remind kids and their parents to write their letters to Santa. Sue told us about the Letters to Santa program, how children can get their letter to Santa, and how you can help support the program. It's a program that's now in its 19th year here in Peru, where the children who write to Santa deliver their letters to the post office. By the way, no postage is required. Yeah. <laughs> um, they can just address them to Santa. Um, the postal employees provide us with those letters and we go through every letter and anything that we can answer. Santa writes a letter back to the child and provides a gift. Well, hopefully they give us their name yeah. and how old they are. The program is for children 12 and under. Um, tell us where you live so that Santa knows exactly where to deliver your presents and the elves will help him get all of that ready. We'd like to know whether you're a boy or a girl, what your wish list is. Um, and anything else you'd like to tell Santa. We'll happily accept donations at any time. Unfortunately, this year, our kickoff Santa breakfast, mm -hmm. um, which is our annual pancake breakfast, had to be canceled due to the COVID-19 restrictions. Mm -hmm. And we're really sorry that we had to do that, but hopefully we can uh, do that again next year. Uh, our address is Prump Valley Alliance Club, Post Office Box 133, Pahrump 89041. And if you have any questions, our phone number is 775-727-9016. And a Lions member will get your message and return a call. Yes, our deadline this year is December 17th because we want to make sure we can get everything done and Santa has a chance to deliver all the presents prior to Christmas. Um, we would like to let everyone know, especially the parents and the guardians of these children, um, that all guidelines for COVID-19 will be followed as far as social distancing and wearing masks. Um, we want everybody to feel comfortable when we show up. We will not enter your home. We will not face to face you at your door. Yeah. We will ring the bell, leave a gift, walk back so yeah. that you know, you know what's going on. And in today's Save a Pet from Desert Haven Animal Society, Darby introduces us to Diesel. Today's Save a Pet is proudly sponsored by Jason Ernest with Mountain West Lawyers. Call 775-727-9500. Hi, I'm Darby here at Desert Haven Animal Society and today we are joined with Diesel. Diesel is a little over a year old. He is this beautiful gingery colored pit mix. So pretty, it has beautiful gold eyes, extremely friendly, has the softest fur, and he's just a little love. Um, if you want to come and see Diesel or any of his friends here at Desert Haven Animal Society, please give them a call ahead of time to make an appointment so you can see him at 775-751-7020. You definitely want to come out and spend some time with him in the yard because he's so affectionate and sweet and has the cutest little personality. Um, so yeah, give them a call ahead of time, 775-751-7020, or you can always look them up on their Facebook page at Desert Haven Animal Society. Diesel, come here. Come here. News 25 Weather Cam is brought to you by Learner and Rowe Injury Attorney's Office in Pahrump. In a wreck, need a check? Call 702-877-1500. Hi, it's John Kohler on location for KPVM Channel 25. You know where we're at. Well, we're on the dry lake bed south of town. It's a great place to bring your dogs, great place to bring something fast and uh, drive like crazy if you want to. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a resource we've got here locally, and it's a lot of fun. Uh, also, it creates some dust and some uh, air problems, especially on a day like today when the wind is just whipping. I've got a little windbreak where I'm standing, but uh, boy, it is uh, kicking up some dust into the air, and that's affecting some folks that are have uh, they might have respiratory issues. So watch out for that today. We'll tell you about the wind and the weather and all good things when we return. Hi, good evening, Nevada. It's John Kohler from the KPVM Channel 25 Weather Studios. It's a Monday evening, blustery Monday here in Pahrump, and let's check out what uh, it's like in your neighborhood up and down the state, up in Fernley. 41 degrees was a high today, 21 for a low.
Fallon, 42 for a high, 12 for a low. Carson City, you saw 41 for a high, 22 for a low. Tonopah, you win the cold weather award. 35 degrees was as much as you got today. And uh, 13 degrees will be your low tonight. It's, uh, yeah, definitely time to put in a fire in the fireplace. Uh, cuddle up with a hot chocolate. Goldfield, 39 degrees for a high today, 15 for a low. In uh, Beatty, 52 and 30 was your low, and it will, will be later. Amber, go say a year all the way up to 58 degrees and 30 degrees for a low. You kind of weather twin for Vegas a little bit. 58 degrees was their high today. They'll get a little bit warmer than you on the low end, but 38 degrees feels a little nippy down there in Las Vegas. Well, Death Valley, you can always go there. 67 degrees, not too bad. Moderate, you'd say, 43 for a low. As prompt currently, temperature is 52 degrees. 57 was our high today. Man, that wind was crazy. Uh, coming off the dry lake bed, uh, kicking up all kinds of dust. I hope uh, folks that, you know, have a mask, maybe maybe it's a good time to wear one. I don't know, you might have one around. Humidity, 15, uh, 25%, excuse me, uh, currently. And as we uh, creep towards uh, uh, morning, um, it, it'll pick up. Uh, 647 was our, our sunrise this morning. And 4.30 was our uh, sunset. Uh, it'll be a low tonight, about 31 degrees. The winds continue to buff at about 12 miles an hour. It'll calm down a little bit and then a little bit as we uh, go on. But let's take a look at the rest of the week, shall we? Oh, this is good. Uh, we've got uh, highs in the upper 50s. We've got lows in the mid to low 30s most of the week. Looks like we're going to return to some wind on Thursday. Nothing too scary to tell you about. Uh, a little bit of clouds, except on those days when there's not clouds, and we'll let you know about those. But uh, that's uh, looking like... Uh, Winter weather, everything is good in the kingdom of Nye. Back to the desk with Missy and Deanna. Thank you so much to Nevada Dairy Council for sponsoring that weather. And thank you so much to John. We're down there at Dry Lake Bed. Had a great time down there today. Really windy and really dusty. But uh, we'll find out more about our weather in the coming days because it's been so crazy with the wind well, on tomorrow night's broadcast as well.